Live from Amazon Game Studios, Orange County, you are watching the Breakaway June Alpha Exhibition Match. I'm Mr. Sill, joined by... Berserker Mike, and I'm very excited about today's matchup, Sill. That's right, we are on Atala Prime, a new revised map with some new revised warriors, Mike. We see here the new fighter, Argus, who's being played by Ugglesorp, and you can see the equipment that he's loading up on his Argus, that little upside-down sword, that is attack damage. We also see the new range shooter that Boba Vett is rolling with, and that is Kyra, the Atlantean guard. All right, there are three ways to win here in Breakaway, our team battle sport. The first way is you take that relic, that is a golden orb there floating up in the, in the air, the ball that just got respawned, and you bring that to your opponent's base. That's the primary way to score in Breakaway. Another way to win is you wipe out the entire team. So you can look at the top right side of your screen to see the red team's health, top left to see the blue team's health. As those health bars go all the way down, that, pe that person will need to respawn and have a respawn timer that increases every time they get destroyed per round. If the entire team gets uh, on respawn timer, you win. The second way to win in Breakaway, the third way we'll talk about as time ticks away with 3 minutes and 21 seconds left to go in round one of this best of five game here on Breakaway's June Alpha Test. Here we see Kyra throwing the relic up to midfield there. It's getting picked up by uh, no one right now, but nice buildable getting destroyed there from Boba Vett. Boba Vett again playing as Kyra, which is our ranged character here in the June Alpha Test. We see some buildable getting placed there by the Thorgrim character. Every warrior in Breakaway has a buildable they can place. As we see some action happening with Otterhead, he had control of the relic, momentarily used his back toss to do some good damage there to clear up more gap between the red team and the blue team. We see the blue team, they're trying to get control of the relic, push it out of their territory. But Ugglesorp and the red team with the pressure, but just call me Bao, looking to clear it to midfield. That's right, we see Earl Grey now playing. He's playing as Kyra as well. He has control of the relic, it does get hit. It only takes one hit to make you force that fumble when you're holding control of the relic. So you need to be careful there of what's around, know your surroundings. We see Boba Vett now going for his push up the right side there, waiting for the elevator to go up on Atala Prime. He decides not to go up the elevator. Nice fake out there. And now Boba Vett's on an attack position. He's got two, two, uh, two peers ahead of him. We see Boba Vett throwing it up to the Bills. The Bills going in for the score, but he got that ballast to build what to worry about. Does its job and does some great defense there. And now M. Priest playing as Alona has control of the relic. It does clear it back to midfield, but it falls into the hands of Ugglesorp, who's now going again back into the red zone of the red team. What you can see in that footage right there, Sill, is that every character has a buildable that dynamically alters the battlefield, so it really suits the style of character where Thorgrim can put up a wall, and then uh, our Kyra players can put down turrets to set up defenses to cause those fumbles. That's right, and as you're seeing now, Earl Grey looks like he's about to make his attack run. He's going up the right side. You see the healing shrines. These are the buildable of Alona. So they cast anywhere you stand in that green grassy field. Your team, if you're on the red side, will get health as long as you stay in that range. We see the relic there laying in the distance there. Boba Vett picks it up but gets hit momentarily, so he's forced that fumble. There's another Blessing of the Sun. That's an ultimate ability of Nocnaz there, playing as Alona, using that to, again, create an AoE effect to heal everybody in that range. We see Otterhead going up for, uh, uh, he's trying to get into a little bit of attack. He's low on health. He's getting casted Radius from his healer on his side of the field. And there we see Earl Grey is about to take down that healing shrine. Nice work there from Earl Grey. The relic is down there at midfield. And we are down to one minute left to go in the first round here. That blue line at the center of the map, that is the line of scrimmage. You need to cross that line with the relic by the time time expires in order for you to get the third way to win in breakaway. Here we see the red team doing a good job there of keeping the relic there closer. They got to cross the line though, otherwise they're not going to be able to get that score. Here comes M. Priest. Again, keeping on the pressure onto the red side. The red side needs to take that relic over. They have 37 seconds left to go to do it. The Bills with control of the relic. He's going left side. The Bills, completely unaided, goes to side to take a switch detour back to midfield. He gets stopped by M. Priest. M. Priest doing a nice job using Sunburst to teleport ahead of time. Gives the relic over there, but it gets stopped by Boba Vett. Here it comes the Bills. We're down to 21 seconds left to go. Here comes Otterhead. He's just going to go in for the score. Otterhead almost at the scoring range, but he gets melted. He's out now for 12 seconds. There's two people down on the blue team. This is a great power play situation for the red team. You got Boba Vett giving up to the Bills. The Bills gets hit with an eviscerate, the ultimate ability of Jara. And we see we're down to five seconds left to go. Can the Bills cross the line? The Bills across the line. Can the blue team get it on the other side? No, they can't. Point one goes to the red team. Fantastic cycling by the red team. They kept their poise. They were able to get some key kills when they needed them. And I thought that Eviscerate that came in from Jara, came in from John Bao, was going to be the game changer. But they were able to con contain that relic and make their final push across the line. Fantastic effort by the team.
Here you can see items getting bought now. Every time you go back to your base and at the start of every round, you can purchase new items. They're color-coded now, so purple items mean they're ranked four. That's the heroic versions. Green, blue, gray. Those are the different tiers you can do. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we have a break in the action. But right now, we see the Relics down in midfield. We're down with three minutes and 40 seconds left to go. It's the start of round two, again, of this best of five series. As we see now, the Relic is right there at the foot of the, the water part of Atala Prime. We see M Priest with control of the Relic. He fumbles it momentarily, does recover his own fumble. And now he's going to make a run on the left side of the map. Earl Grey has control of it. You see the Cursed War there. That's the new buildable from Karin, which is our debuff character. We'll talk about her momentarily when we see her on screen. You see now, we see Just Call Me Bao playing as Jar, our assassin. He's going up right in the middle, right up the gut! There it is, Bao with the score, number two. And very smart moves by Bao. He realized that that turret, he realized that that turret will not fire on you if you're right up next to it. So he had it shut down and he used his invincible dodge when he's holding the relic to bust through, break away for the score. And we are tied up now. You had Bao doing that great move there with the Eviscerate at the time of the territory win. Unfortunately, as you mentioned, it Mike did not pay off. This time though, Bao's like, I gotta put it in my own hands and I'm gonna score it. It looks like the net worths are just about even. Slight advantage going to the blue team, but we're seeing epic items being purchased. We got tier four attack damage, tier four cooldown reduction on the bills. Those were those purple items. When you see the little hourglass, that's cooldown reduction. When you see the little shield icon, that is armor. And when you get it to tier four, you get bonus stats and your character will start to scale. All right, so momentary action you saw being played right there. Bao was invisible. That's one of the special abilities of the warrior Jara. She can go invisible. You can then pounce out of that to get into an, 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 an enemy warrior, st uh, stun them momentarily, or you can just go right into your ultimate with Eviscerate, which is what Bao did in that turn around. We see Uglesor playing as Argus now, our main fighter. He has the relic thrown up there right at the foot of the blue team's base. He's got to go up those steps, though. He's unable to do so. He's out for eight seconds. He'll get back to respawn momentarily as he pops in another quarter from his pocket. We see Naknaz now with control of the Relic, throwing it upfield though. Naknaz goes down, he's out now for eight seconds. And now we see DeBills, he's looking like struggling. He's struggling as Karin, he's gonna have to go back and gain some health. He's going back to that healing shrine there on the left side of your screen in the distance there. There's two healing shrines you can choose from. And there's that turret doing a good job of adding some great defense, hitting on Otterhead there as Naknaz and DeBills are doing a good job of trying to just keep Otterhead in bay, distracting him, but Naknaz, he's looking really low on health. Well, the red team is actually really squishy. They have uh, Kyra, who's backline, attack damage. They have Morgan, debuff, also backline. And they have Alona. So there's a lot of support and a lot of squishy, and no tank for that team. So they're playing a lot of counterattack, and they're grouping up. Yeah, you're gonna see a lot of kills happen there on the blue team side. You saw Bao just go down, playing again, playing as the assassin character, Jar. He's out for eight seconds left now. Uh, as we see the Relic back to midfield, M Priest with control of the Relic. He's going to go right side there. He's got to worry about Naknaz. Naknaz does get in his face a little bit. Here's Bubba Vett doing his great job again, playing as Kyra, the marksman. And now Bubba Vett has control of the Relic, using the slide ability to gain that extra momentum. Here we go, Bubba Vett up the right side. Nice pass to Naknaz. Naknaz gets the fumble, but unable to pick it up. And now Bao, with a beautiful recovery, just brings the Relic back over to the other side. Now Bubba Vett forced to have to try to cross midfield. He's unable to do so. And now the Relic is looking pretty good there with Boba Vett and you have Naknaz there and now you have the Bills coming into play as well. The red team can start taking more risks. Did you take a look at their backline still? They have a ton of buildables. Now buildables will persist each round if they're not destroyed so you can build more of them and look at that base that they have going on there. Yeah, they have quite a quite a Fort Knox getting built right before your eyes. We see Otterhead now with control. No, he doesn't able to get the relic. He gets snuck in there from Boba Vett sneaking past there, taking that relic and mine, mine, mine. As we see Naknaz now jumping in with the relic. Nice there, nice juke move past Otterhead. He didn't know what was coming, but he quickly connects there with Naknaz. Naknaz again forced to camp out by that healing shrine, very low on health. You have all four members of the red team kind of clumping, which is not good, and also why Otterhead uses the Ragnarok, which is the ultimate ability of Thorgrim. You want to be careful if you're facing Thorgrim near any edge. Most all of his abilities are set to ring you out. Here we see we're down to 55 seconds left to go. That blue line has appeared at the center of the map, so you need to cross it there. We see Boba Vett doing a heroic attempt on his own, but one against four, you're never going to win that battle. As we see Otterhead now with the Relic, he's forced that fumble up there. Good pass from Priest over to Otterhead, but there it is. Uglesorp doing a great job being right where the Relic is, but you got to worry about time now. You can't be playing this cat and mouse game. There's only 32 seconds left to go in this round, and there will always be a victor here. 
Here we see DeBills now with control of the Relic. He's getting a little sneaky going up the left side there. He crosses the line, so now this is a point in favor of the red team if they're able to keep it on this side of the line with 20 seconds left to go. Otterhead, now he's going to cross that line, and now it's in the point for the blue team as time ticks down with 13 seconds left to go. You saw a nice shot there from Kyra playing again as Boba Vett doing a good job as that character. And Priest goes up the elevator. It's him and DeBills. Four seconds left to go. Can DeBills throw it over from downtown to cross the middle line? No, DeBills goes down. And there's a point for the blue team. What a clutch shot from Earl Grey. The minute he saw DeBills hold that relic right between the eyes. This round could decide the winner. Here we see more buys coming in still. Everybody with a tier four legendary piece of equipment. It is raining purples here on Atala Prime. Absolutely. Uh, net worth still the advantage goes to the blue side, and we're seeing a lot more in that attack damage that we're seeing from Kyra, played by Earl Grey. There we see Earl Grey placing yet another Ballista, another turret defense there. As you see the Siege Engine, which is Argus's buildable, that's really primarily made to destroy buildables, so I don't know if that was a miscue or what happened there. As we see action happening on the base there of Atala Prime on the blue side, we see M Priest doing a good job trying to take that relic out. But there's Ugglesorp going up on the second story. Ugglesorp on a breakaway. It's him and Earl Grey, but does get hit with the shot. Earl Grey, he is not missing tonight. Look at all those turrets that they have set up. They need to start taking those things down. I expect to see the red team's Kyra at least either build some demo when she goes back to base or start shooting those things from afar. They need a path. They need to build themselves a lane to score. Yeah, but you also got all these other buildables on the red team side. Look at those cursed wards. Those will slow you down. So anytime you see a blue member go into those trees with those little the blue circles, you will see them instantly get a slowdown effect. So great way to just catch up if they're if they're getting ahead. It's a good way to gain ground and just stop the momentum actioning from the red team. And if you're on the blue team, you got to take out those buildables. Always go after the buildables, guys. Well, it, there's a good reason to take out buildables because you get direct gold for yourself and you get a little bit for your team. And that's essential to get those buys to scale up your equipment and start doing a lot more damage or a lot more defense. All right, we see Bao now connecting with the Relic. You saw him invisible momentarily. Nice pass up to Otterhead. Otterhead with control of the Relic. He's going left side of the arena now. We see Otterhead and M Priest. M Priest was casting Radiance, just topping off the health of Otterhead. Otterhead getting picked off by DeBills, having to force that fumble as it goes up to the second story. And there to greet him is Ugglesorp using that Retribution, the ultimate ability of Argus. And now he's able to get the Relic with some elevator funkery, though. He ends up not coming on top with the Relic as Otterhead now has it. He's about to go into the Cursed Wards, but he gets stopped action. He's forced that fumble. Knocknaw's coming into the mix now, and it's Otterhead just trying to defend the Relic. But he leaves his back door open as Boba Vett picks it up, but he's crossing midfield. Well, you know what I have to look out for right now? Where's John Bao? Where is that Jara? He's lurking in the shadows. Oh my goodness, Boba Vett almost gets hit, and then oh, an eviscerate from John it. Bell. You call that one. The invisibility to the eviscerate connection, not good if you are playing as Kyra and falling victim to that. Boba Vett, we will see you in four seconds. And Bao went back to base to heal and make some purchases. He got a lot of gold from that kill, and now he's just going to wait back at base until he can go out for his next victim. And we can see that Thorgrim played by Otterhead. He is on fire right now. Oh, there's a lot of death raining down right there. A fantastic Ragnaroks coming in. That's the ultimate ability from Thorgram. Great shots from Boba Vett. He's just trying to freeze the action on top of that Relic. We see Otterhead now with control of the Relic going right side. Does get stopped by Nocknaz. Nocknaz doing a good job of just taking down, just being a little bit of a pest. You see the Relic, it only takes one hit from any warrior in Breakaway to force that fumble. So Nocknaz taking advantage of the fact that he is a, has a ranged ability, even though he is primarily a healer and character playing as Alona. We're down to 55 seconds left to go. This looks like it could go to another territory win, Mike. Very rarely do we see these territory wins. We've now seen potentially three. As we see now with 50, 45 seconds left to go, Earl Grey with control of the Relic. It is fallen now We're in the Cursed Wards, so that definitely favors the red team. Nocknaz does a dash to pick it up, but he's unable to keep it. Bow passes up to Otterhead. Otterhead on the throw! There it is from downtown Otterhead! And there it is. I believe that is a 1-2 and a 3. They are the champions of this Breakaway Exhibition match. You have been watching the Breakaway June Alpha Test. If you want to get in on this action, Hop on over to playbreakaway.com slash alpha, or if you're already on the website, click the button to sign up for the alpha. We will be letting people in pretty much periodically now through the end of time. So thank you very much. For all of us here at Amazon Game Studios, I'm Mr. Sill. And I'm Berserker Mike. We will see you on the battlefield.